ask me to write or it's not really a gift. Don't go spending your money on me like that. I don't want roses. Ranunculus is where it's at. I'd like to go outside and recite poetry. The contemporary Valentine's Day holiday is widely accepted as a way to celebrate love. I just want to know where we're going ahead of time so that I can read the menu. Throw me in first class. Give me something bubbly. <laughs> I legitimately want whatever it is you want to get me. Valentine's Day, it's next week. And today we're going to revisit some Valentine's Day wishes by Enneagram type. But first, I was curious, is there a trend with Enneagram numbers and love languages? If you're not familiar with the love languages or what that term means, it's based on a book by Gary Chapman called the five love languages. And the premise is basically that every person receives love in one of five ways. Words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, quality time, or physical touch. So I asked our followers if they know their love language and what number they are, and the results are pretty interesting. All right, let's start with Enneagram Ones. Their love language is acts of service followed closely by quality time. So do the dishes for those Enneagram Ones. They will love you if you do that. Enneagram Twos love to be loved. I heard that from so many people. Enneagram twos that responded to this survey, uh, but we got a three-way tie between quality time, then acts of service, and words of affirmation. But they also don't mind your physical touch, and they will gladly accept your gifts. Okay, uh, well, I think we have a clear winner here for Enneagram three, and I don't think anybody is shocked. Words of affirmation. Threes love to hear them, so please share. Um, acts of service is a distant second. Um, really all we care about here are words. Words, words, words. Share those with your Enneagram 3 friends. Oh, oh, here we go. Another clear winner. Enneagram 4s love quality time. Spending time, not just quantity of time, but quality time with their loved ones. And then another distant second is words of affirmation. And everything else just clearly falls by the wayside. A quality time for Enneagram 4s. There you go. Enneagram 5s, uh, we have two pretty clear winners here, quality time and acts of service. Enneagram 6s, they also love quality time followed with words of affirmation as a close second. Enneagram 7s, they want your time. And I heard from several of them, they want your time to do something fun. And words of affirmation is a somewhat distant second. Enneagram 8s, pretty close between quality time and acts of service which actually makes a lot of sense. I'm an Enneagram 8, but my love language is physical touch, which is kind of down there with the other numbers. But um, I do get quality time and acts of service. I'd love that too. Yeah. And finally, Enneagram 9s, and it's a basic tie between quality time and words of affirmation. So spend some quality time with your Enneagram 9s and tell them lots of nice things about them, and that will make them feel loved. Thanks so much for participating in that. I usually post questions like that over on our Instagram page. So if you're not following us, make sure you do. We are at Top Not Comedy over there. Now, Leanne and I talking about Valentine's Day wishes by Enneagram type. I like to keep Valentine's Day simple. I don't want a lot of gifts. Maybe restocking our pantry, uh, going to Costco for me, getting some toilet paper, putting it on the toilet paper dispenser, doing the dishes, putting them away in the right spots though. Folding the laundry, condo fold. Help around the house would be great, but it has to be done right, or it's not really a gift. I do like some chocolates, but you just have to get me those one chocolates that I like. You know the ones. Only those. Oh, for goodness sake, don't go spending your money on me like that. <laughs> Flowers are pricey. Ah, oh, what do I want? I would love the chance to make my husband his favorite frittata in bed. He's just so excited the way his eyes light up when I come in with the tray. Oh, Valentine's Day is fun. I can think of no more romantic way to spend the day than watching his favorite basketball team compete for hours on end. Swoosh romance. I am hoping that my husband plans out my perfect day to my exact specifications, but it's a total surprise to me. I would like the day to start with a beautiful bouquet of ranunculus. I don't want roses. No, 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 no. Ranunculus is where it's at. Plus it's fun to say, ranuncula. <laughs> Breakfast served to me in bed with a mimosa with gluten-free toast and avocado. So I would want to start the day just 
by spending some time enveloped in meditative silence, looking into one another's eyes, saying everything without saying anything. And then after we enjoy a cup of herbal tea, I'd like to go outside and recite poetry. It will be the end of winter, but the beginning of spring, the perfect time for butter burr, maybe some primrose, greater stitchwort. And then we'll take those flowers and press them together in the pages of a book so that we kill them, but on purpose, thus immortalizing them. Valentine's Day is not my favorite holiday for a number of reasons. Uh, it has roots, of course, as everybody knows, in the Roman festival of Lupercalia, which was held in mid-February. I mean, it was quite barbaric. And it wasn't until the uh, 5th century, I believe, as everybody knows, that Pope Gelasius replaced it with what we now call St. Valentine's Day. The contemporary Valentine's Day holiday is widely accepted as a way to celebrate love and affection, I guess. What I would like is for breakfast, lunch, and dinner to be delivered to me via courier, uh, and I would not like to leave the confines of my living room for the entire day. I really don't care where we go for dinner. I just want to know where we're going ahead of time so that I can read the menu and plan out what I'm gonna have and I can take a look at the Yelp reviews. For a box of chocolates, I don't want anything made at home or handmade in someone else's kitchen. I'd rather have like Russell Stover or Whitman's chocolates, like sealed, sealed shut with a label, with a menu label that I can pick out which ones I want because I don't like the caramel that's too, too hard in my crowns. Flowers or chocolate? Uh, yes and yes. And I'd like them both in the car while I'm blindfolded on the way to the airport. Do I want to know where we're going? I do not! Throw me in first class, give me something bubbly, don't care what, and take me somewhere. Let's do this. Oh, for a present? Oh, I'm not picky. I mean, I would love just about anything for a Valentine's Day present. I'd take a goldfish, a guinea pig, a litter of feral kittens, a new German shepherd. Always wanted to breed horses. A baby sheep would be totally rad. Would consider raising a camel under the right circumstances. I don't really care about Valentine's Day, to be totally honest. And if we must, <sighs> brunch at my favorite place. Uh, maybe a gift card for some coffee. <laughs> the last thing I want is an original poem or song. Not necessary. I legitimately want whatever it is you want to get me. That sounds perfect. Whatever you're thinking of, don't say it. Think it, hold it here. That's what I want. What you just thought. Oh, please, I'm sorry. Please don't ask me where I want to go to dinner. This was kind of a whole thing last year. My husband kept asking me where I wanted to go and I kept saying, I just want to go where you want to go. And he said, no, I want to go where you want to go. And those are the most aggressive words I've ever heard. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that your Valentine shows you that you're loved in the language that speaks clearest to you. And my love language is YouTube views and subscribers. So while you're here, hit that subscribe button, stick around and watch a few videos.